Hi everybody, this is uh, Willie. My real name is Don Sutton, but I'm called Willie by people that know me. Uh, his name, his nickname is Willie from Willie Sutton, the bank robber, who, uh, when he got caught over and over again after escaping from prison, they would say, Willie, what do you rob banks for? And he'd say, because that's where the money is. Anyway, uh, I tend to go for the essence of things, uh, not necessarily money. Anyway, this is uh, my new podcast called Evolution Revolution. And if you don't feel the revolution, you're, you're not paying attention. Um, this, this is a, a new podcast venture for me. Uh, the last one I did was called Willie's World, and that was um, an attempt to expose the deep state, which I did such a good job of, I got worried about people finding out what I was doing. So I, uh, I stopped partly because I didn't want to get involved any more than I was, and partly because I saw everything happening a year in advance. So it wasn't, wasn't worth watching a year to see what I predicted two years ago. So, so I uh, stopped that and I, I went to work for Marianne 2020, Marianne Williamson's uh, presidential campaign, and that was uh, really exciting. And uh, I didn't think we had a chance to win, but I, I, th I thought we had a chance of starting a revolution that is now, in fact, ongoing on, on many fronts. And it was also a fun experience. And, and Marianne is a, uh, y you have to meet Marianne to uh, know why people uh, are so attached to her. So, um, so I worked on that for a while. And uh, in 2019, I had a uh, remarkable uh, spiritual experience f facilitated by my uh, Guru Babaji, uh, where I went into a eight week uh, deep dive, as it's called, which uh, is impossible to describe, but is a transforming experience, which you, you, you're never the same once it happens, and I'm definitely not the same now. And uh, to make a long story short, um, I met some people who uh, do a transformational uh, psycho-spiritual coaching, uh, focusing uh, on addictions of various kinds, but you can use it for anything. And uh, I found their work to be fascinating, and I also decided that, well, uh, that I guess that's going to be my new profession, so I'm a now a, uh, about to become a transformational psycho-spiritual coach and not sure what I'm going to specialize in, but it might be identity uh, recovery and self-discovery. But anyway, that's uh, so that's I'm about to finish my education for that. And uh, so I'll be actually doing it sometime soon. And part of what I'm going to be talking about in this podcast is things related to transformational uh, things in general. And uh, when I worked on Marianne 2020, I, I focused on uh, social media, and, and specifically, I focused on something called collective evolution, uh, which is uh, which happens to be the name of a uh, website of uh, this guy, Joe Mar Martino in Canada, and his objective 10 years ago was to create a evolution of uh, a collection of people who were evolving essentially to form a network that would become more and more powerful. Uh, and uh, so I was going to do that to uh, develop a voting base for uh, future future voters for Marianne Williamson. Uh, and and basically the uh, idea behind collective evolution is that uh, um, most people. Many, many people, maybe half the people in, in America, are kind of like uh, in a trance in the sense that they watch television and uh, believe what they see. And, of course, everything is fake news now, so um, they become hypnotized as, as far as percep you know, perceiving reality goes. And uh, so he has, Joe, Joe has a technology for breaking that hypnosis and, and perceiving reality directly enabling people to make decisions on their own. So I was going to use that to uh, prime voters for Marianne. So um, what I'm going to play next on this first podcast is is, is the first episode of his uh, 
training in uh, doing that, which he calls CE protocol. So the first thing you're going to hear is that the, the first is CE protocol part one, and I'll be playing the other parts in future podcasts. Okay, welcome to what we're calling the CE protocol. Now, what this is, is a series of videos that are going to help you understand why we've designed collective evolution to operate the way it does within its media and the way it brings consciousness and spirituality into the picture. This is something that not only encapsulates what we're doing from a media perspective and an education perspective, but also what people can do as what we've identified as shifting your consciousness from a state where we may not be all that awake or all that open to certain things happening in our world and within ourselves to being at a point where we are living authentic within ourselves and actually able to create a world where we can all truly thrive. So this protocol is going to look through all of that. And the way we've decided to start this is by looking at part number one, which is called breaking the illusion. So why we decided to call this first part breaking the illusion is it's really about shattering the quote unquote matrix out there. If you remember the movie, The Matrix, uh, you recall that at one point, the character Neo starts to understand that the world he thought was real wasn't actually the real world. Now, the reason why this relates to what we're talking about is it starts looking at the way we cover our media, the way we cover current events, the way we cover the understanding of what's happening. So. Everything that happens in our world is happening as a result of a current state of consciousness, a current state of being that we as a collective, which individually contributes to the collective, are operating under that creates everything that we see in the systems and structures around us. Now, those systems and structures are functioning in such a way where there is also a level of manipulation that's taking place by a group of individuals, by a group of people known as the deep state or the cabal or you know whatever you like to call it. The reason why it is so important that we understand this is because without this understanding, as with a lot of you know, alternative media that might look at the world the way it is without you know, having quite the corporate lens, but maybe perhaps just a little bit of a different lens, sometimes that media will miss out on this very important aspect of understanding why truly the world is the way it is. And if we don't understand it from that point of view, breaking the illusion and seeing the way the world really functions, we don't actually know where we're at. And if we don't know where we're at, we don't know how to properly think and from a point of depth, how we can actually move forward. So step number one for us is all about actually understanding the true nature of our reality and how our world functions from the standpoint of as deep as we possibly can go with it. This means that sometimes we're gonna learn about things that are happening in our world that just don't feel that favorable, that don't feel like, hey, you know, I, I, that seems negative or that doesn't seem like something that I wanna learn about. In fact, a lot of spiritually focused individuals tend to look at current events or tend to look at talking about the cabal or the deep state as something that is negative. The challenge with this is that this is a spiritual bypass in such a big way. And the reason for that is, is it, it doesn't want to look at the aspect of ourselves and the aspect of our reality that is happening at this very moment. Our consciousness is allowing this stuff to be created, not only because we are unconscious of it, but because we refuse to look at and recognize that aspect of what you might call darkness that is within our world. So we have to understand where that that this part of the process from going from uh, you know quote unquote being asleep to being awake and to truly getting into a world where we can thrive we have to go through the process of becoming awake to what's going on in our world it's not just a spiritual journey it's not just a you know understanding the conspiracy journey those two worlds must come together we must understand that that's all part of this entire equation it's sort of like you know, from a spiritual perspective, you might say, oh, well, if we meditate for peace, if we meditate for allowing the world to thrive and we truly all just do that, then we'll get there. We don't have to learn about this Illuminati stuff, this, this cabal stuff, and this whole stuff that's going on. We don't have to learn about that. That's all negative anyway. We, if we all just meditated, if six billion people meditated, we would change the world instantly. The challenge with that is there is truth in that our collective consciousness, when focused on something together, can create a change. That is true. The challenge is, is that we assume that by meditating on peace, for example, that suddenly we will have peace right away. But that's not entirely the case because we are going through an evolutionary process. So a more accurate way to look at if 6 billion people were to meditate at once and we were meditating on peace and having a world where we can truly thrive, what you might expect to actually see is a process where we start learning about, we start seeing, truth begins to bubble to the surface and we start understanding that, hey, 
there's some, there's some odd dark stuff going on on the planet. There's some things that are happening. That is the pathway to peace. That is what we have to learn and discover and process as a collective to get to that point of peace. So here we have these experiences bubbling up and we have a choice. We either look at it, understand it, see what it's representing about us individually and us collectively, transmute it, processes, and start getting to this world of, of peace and of where we can actually thrive. Or we continue to do what a lot of us are doing and we just keep going, no, that's not happening. No, no, bury my head in the sand. That's not actually taking place. So. The meditation of getting to peace, getting to a world where we can thrive, may very well bring up the truth that we have to face within ourselves because that is simply the process, the pathway to get to where we all want to be. So what we decided to do in our media is essentially look at the world from a standpoint where we're looking at it consciously. We're not bringing in politics, we're not bringing in all this divide and this push and pull and limiting our reality to what, you know, all these different little games that we're playing here within our current state of consciousness. We look at our media and say, how can we look at this from a bigger picture perspective? And instead of coloring it as positive and negative, let's look at what our current state of consciousness is actually creating. That way, there's no burying our heads in the sand, there's no avoiding the consciousness or the spiritual end of it, and there's no only looking at one aspect of the world. We decide to look at it all. We decide to say, with courage, how can we look at everything that's taking place so we can truly understand it, know where we're at, and make the necessary shifts in our consciousness and our beliefs and our understanding to start projecting a world that is actually built from a new state of consciousness. That's what conscious media is. It challenges us to look at the world from a conscious point of view, remain grounded in the realities that are actually taking place and not getting caught up in political sides or other forms of bias or ego and all that sort of stuff, and then making the necessary changes to shift our world from a different state of peace or a different state of consciousness. That's what this is about. And that's why breaking the illusion is such a key aspect to this entire thing. Because if we don't do that and we keep avoiding it and we keep pushing it away, we're never going to understand where we are truly at. So this is oftentimes step one of the process for most of us. Some of us who might already be awake or, or, or aware in a spiritual sense usually still need to go through this process because a lot of times we're just avoiding this. So breaking the illusion, huge first step in our protocol and why we cover a lot of the things that we do choose to cover that some people might think, ooh, that's a little bit dark, ooh, that's a little bit negative. You might notice that the way we cover it isn't dark or isn't negative. It simply looks at things for what it is and asks us to, to, you know, to explore difficult questions about why it's there and how we can begin to shift it. Okay, that's a, a little bit starter on uh, Collective Evolution, uh, for which I'll be playing subsequent episodes. Uh, for, and uh, hopefully people find it interesting and maybe uh, pass it on to people that could uh, use a little uh, um, awareness training, breaking the illusion. Um, and so that's that's an interest of mine that I'm continuing, even, even though Marianne's uh, campaign has, uh, at least in its first form, has finished uh, the, the work of Joe in Canada and me here. It goes on. And my other area of interest, as I said, is um, psychedelic uh, integration coaching. And I'm about to be certified as a uh, transformational psycho spiritual coach. And uh, so, what is. That is, what does that mean exactly? Well, let's break it down into two parts. Let's talk about uh, psycho-spiritual, and then I'll talk about the other part later. So here is a uh, is somebody describing what they understand as psycho-spiritual, and I'll put uh, reference to the uh, YouTube video that I got this from in, in the uh, program notes. But uh, here goes a description of psycho-spiritual. Hey guys, I wanted to give a quick introduction to psycho-spiritual therapy. So on one hand, you could interpret psycho-spiritual therapy as psychology on the one hand and then spirituality on the other hand. And we introduce these two worlds to each other and it would be kind of like one plus one equals two. But a more accurate interpretation of psycho-spiritual therapy is the recognition that these two are not separate and that they have only ever been separated in our minds, in our awareness, 
So now psychology and spirituality have become two different things. And that's kind of <laughs> why, why we keep running into problems and issues and not really getting to where we want to go with either of these paths. At least that is my personal experience. That is, you know, if a lot of people with them are, will be honest with themselves, that's what I see happening. And a lot of people are kind of now waking up to this stuff. You know, a lot of us are now, a lot of people from, from like the, the, the more traditional psychological viewpoint, they're coming to spirituality. A lot of spiritual people that have been in the spiritual circle are like, oh, a spiritual bypass, you know, let's go to a therapy. It's great, it's very natural. But we shouldn't just trade one world for the other world, or for a little while, it's okay. But in the end, we're not coming to find that the issue with, was in separating the two. So psycho-spiritual therapy is not one plus one is two, it recognizes that these two have never been separated. It recognizes that they are one. One plus one is one. So psychospiritual therapy um, just acknowledges that we are both human and more than human. So psychology and spirituality, you know, their objectives, in a way they overlap. Both want to alter your perception to lessen your suffering. Or both want to work on your awareness, on your consciousness, to increase your well-being, your happiness, and your, the quality of your life, in a way, you know? However, Psychology has been born out of the old paradigm. Psychology is born out of the Newtonian paradigm where matter is real and consciousness is maybe kind of like a byproduct. You know, this is the Newtonian model where linear time is what's real, where matter is what's real. The new paradigm, the age of Aquarius, that we're moving into, quantum physics, recognizes actually everything is consciousness, appearing as form. But if you were to look really down into the form, there is no form. It's all consciousness. And so we're not actually human. We're having a human experience doesn't mean we're not human, it means we are also human, we are also spirit. So psycho-spiritual therapy is, is like, well, we're not just spirit, we're not just human. From certain perspectives, we are both. And so if we want to have true well-being, we need to start integrating both of these perspectives. And so what psycho-spiritual therapy, psycho-spiritual work, psycho-spiritual perspective, what it does, it simply shows us that, well, all of these problems that we're having and that we are treating with psychology amongst others, the, we only have these problems because we identify with matter. We identify with being a human only rather than understanding that this is just one perspective. And so how can you combat, 
How can you cure an issue that is created out of forgetting that you're more than human without including the awareness that you are more than just human? So this is what psycho-spiritual therapy is all about. Um, the most accurate way to, to look at this would be to see it as spiritual therapy. You know, not as a spiritual path somewhere out into it. It's like, no, it's spirituality for your everyday life. Or you could see it as therapeutic spirituality. Spiritual concepts, but then actually applied in a way that recognizes that we are having a human experience. And it has been pretty traumatic. Let's not cancel that out. And let's not try and skip to some endpoint. And so, psycho spirituality is. Um, It's a bridger of worlds. It recognizes, you know, like it brings back together light and dark. It brings back together humanity and divinity. It brings back together masculine and feminine. So it integrates everything. And when everything is integrated, you have wholeness. And wholeness is the only thing that's going to make us feel better. Not a solution, solutions to our brokenness. It's never going to do the trick. So yeah, I see psycho-spiritual therapy as the future of both psychology, spirituality, humanity. Okay, there is an explanation of uh, psycho-spiritual, which I thought is one of the better ones and uh, pretty succinct and yet it explains a whole lot. And uh, that's a whole different level of coaching uh, from coaching that doesn't account for the spiritual realm as being a powerful tool in uh, advancing a person's uh, growth and ability to uh, overcome addictions and uh, and uh, discover their own identity and all sorts of wonderful things. So I'm, I'm really get, really excited about um, doing that in the near future. And uh, the other part of it is transformative, transformational, and uh, that's... Um, also really interesting um, in that uh, when a transformation happens, it's, it's, it's a permanent thing in the sense that the person's never the same um, again. And, uh, and also the word uh, in integration is uh, used along with this type of coaching in that you, uh, what people learn from their experiences, uh, spiritual and psychological, to, to integrate them into their life essentially and into their uh, personality as a whole. Uh, so uh, here, here's a little blurb about uh, tr what is transformational coaching, and I'll also include a, a reference to that in the, uh, the show notes. So here it goes. Hi, um, today I want to talk about the idea of transformation and what we mean by transformational coaching. Um, it's one of these words, isn't it, transformation, which is kind of bandied around um, without really <laughs> ever getting clear on what we mean by transformation. But actually, when we talk about transformational coaching, we're talking about something quite specific and quite, um, quite definable, if you like. And it's this idea that change can take place at different levels, but that the greatest change, the deepest change, the most profound change is one where transformation takes place in, in the sense of the client's paradigm. The client's paradigm changes, which then changes everything else that that paradigm uh, experiences or allows to be experienced. So, so what do I mean by that? Well, if we think about somebody who has um, the, uh, certain assumptions about how the world is or certain assumptions about their own identity or, or other people and how other people interact with them, or perhaps they have certain assumptions about the world, how the world works, you know, if X happens then Y happens and this is just something almost like a law of nature if you like. Perhaps they've got certain beliefs around how the world works or they have certain values which underpin the way they feel about the world or about themselves. Um, maybe they have certain expectations about the way things should be or will be. 
all these things, they kind of come together to form what we might think of as the paradigm. The paradigm is the, the internal mental model, sometimes called the, the world view. Um, if we accept that client's world view when we're coaching them, we are not really working transformationally, although transformation may be an incidental byproduct which just happens to happen. But we're not working transformationally because we are accepting the paradigm as it presents itself, saying let's work within that paradigm, let's assume the paradigm is true and see where change can take place. And that may, may be a very effective way of working, by the way, there's nothing wrong with that. It might be that in time-limited situations of coaching, you need to work within the existing paradigm. But what if you have time, space, and the, 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 the permission, if you like, to work at the level where you start to question the underlying assumptions, patterns, behaviours um, that, that form that person's paradigm? But if we were to shift their assumptions of the world, their assumptions of themselves, their expectations of the world, their beliefs, and that changed the way they saw themselves in the world, then everything else starts to shift. At that point, you could be said to be working consciously at a transformational level. That's to say that you are deliberately working at a level that, that looks at the underlying assumptions, that allows them to be brought to the surface and, if you like, examined, to be unfolded, to be lifted up and peered under, so that as you start to do this with your client, the change that happens has a much greater, greater ripple effect than simply changing the behaviour that comes as a result of that paradigm. This is what we mean by transformational coaching. Uh, I hope that helps. It's one of the things we pride ourselves on as a school, is that we do teach uh, this form of coaching, albeit not exclusively. We believe that every kind of coaching has its use, but the transformational level is often forgotten or misrepresented in a very loose use of the word. So I hope that's helpful. Thanks very much and I'll see you on another video soon. Okay, that's quite a bit of information for my uh, first podcast. I uh, need to uh, digest a lot of information that I got in a very short period of time to uh, totally focus on my new direction, but essentially I'm going to be working on uh, collective evolution in some form or another, educating people and uh, and uh, putting information out there in a podcast from other people involved in the work, have different viewpoints, and also I'm going to be talking about my new career, transformational coaching, and uh, give some information there perhaps for future clients and perhaps I'll interview some other coaches to see how they do it. and. Uh, and uh, that should be enough to keep me busy for a while. So uh, I'm excited about launching my uh, new podcast, uh, Evolution Revolution. And uh, if you want to join the revolution, uh, tune in, and I'll uh, help you. Uh, I'll, I'll help you with that. So uh, that's it for now. Tune in for episode two uh, in about a week from now.